I have to ask, ha have any of you ever had your identity stolen? I've never had my identity stolen. When I was working in Paris, I got followed from a cash machine, kind of like what the lady said. Someone had spotted me. I had my wallet in my hands. And in Europe, you press a button to let, you know, and I buzzed in, someone let me in. And I totally got mugged. He, like, beat Oof, me. Really? And left me there. And he literally followed me from a cash machine. Okay. And it changed the way I do everything But your now. credit card numbers have never been stolen? No. Drew? All of the above, you know. I Credit cards, somebody got into my bank account, and uh, Same, somebody happens. actually filed a bogus tax return. Really? In, in my name and Social Security. How recently was this? It was a couple years really? attempting to get a tax refund. So well, luckily we have an expert with us and we have someone who has some tips so you can learn how to protect your identity. AARP Fraud Watch Network member and AARP The Magazine Scams Expert, Doug Shadell joins us. <laughs> Doug, this is scary stuff. And obviously we all get mail, we're all online. Uh, first thing I wanted to ask you for our viewers is who gets targeted the most often other than Dr. Orton? <laughs> <laughs> Well, identity theft can happen to anybody. Um, we've interviewed these identity thieves, though, and unfortunately, older people tend to be good targets for a couple reasons. Easy One is now. many live in the analog world. They still don't have online access to bank accounts or credit cards. And the other thing is that they have good credit. Younger people have 15 credit cards, and they're maxed out on a lot of them. A lot of folks have one credit card, one gas card, and... The real trend right now is not stealing somebody's existing credit, but stealing their identity and then creating new credit using their name. Ooh. And that's what these two you saw did. Is it safer then to do most of your credit card and banking online so you're not getting these paper statements in the mail? It is. And I got to say, I, I'm a recent convert. As recently as three or four years ago, I didn't trust the internet. You know, uh, oh no, that's going to scare scary. But <laughs> these folks have convinced us that it's actually more risky to not have online access. Why? If you wait for that paper statement at the end of the month, a lot can happen in 30 days. So I have, you know, one credit card, one bank account. I check them every single day online. The other thing is that some of these thieves, if you don't have online access, will steal your identity and create their own online access, as in the victim you saw here, so that they can't even prove they are who they say they are. What are some top tips so that we can not have this happen to us? Yeah, good, great question. Well, we divide them into sort of two buckets, low tech and high tech. The low tech is have a locking mailbox. You, I can't tell you, I drive up and down streets, sometimes with ID thieves, sometimes by myself. How many people still have unlocking mailboxes? And they will send, the, a lot of these are drug addicts, networks of drug addicts who will go steal stuff and bring it back to somebody like an Alice who's the computer whiz, right? So lock, locking mailbox is number one. Number two, shredding documents. Get a cross-cut shredder and make sure that you don't throw away those bank statements because people will actually dive into your garbage and look for those things and pull them out and take them back to the master thief who will then use them That's to steal your identity. Tip. That's a great And the tip. third low-tech one is don't leave stuff in your car. You know, Alice described to us how she would sit in a parking lot and wait for somebody to take their laptop out of the back seat of the car and say, oh, my laptop's in my car. I better keep, you know, put it in the trunk. Then they put it in the trunk, and you go pop the trunk. Well, Stealing a laptop or a smartphone is really bad. So those are the low tech. The high tech is, we've already talked about, online banking, online access to your credit cards, and make sure you have a passcode on your smartphone, laptop, computer. Because if you don't, and a lot of seniors in particular don't have passcodes on their smartphone, if that phone is, is synced up to all of your accounts and you don't have a passcode, somebody gets a hold of it, now they are you. They don't even mm -hmm. have to hack anything. They just start using all of your accounts. Can I give you one more? This, this thing right here, this little thumb drives, I could tell on myself, I left one of these at a Starbucks accidentally oh. in, in downtown Seattle, raced back, got it, and I'm like, just out of curiosity, what's on this? I transfer files back and forth with a thumb drive and it's not encrypted, there's no passcode on it. I'm thinking, why do I need a passcode? <laughs> My tax return was on this. Whoa. All kinds of personal information. So make sure you get a thumb drive that you can pass code protect, These especially if you're putting sensitive really documents such on Such great it. tips. Thank you yeah. so much for yeah. sharing me. And if you feel like your identity maybe has been compromised or want to know more about how to protect yourself, head to our website, thedoctorstv.com. We'll be right back.